into the wrong goddamn rec room, didn't you, you bastard? Hey guys, thanks for sticking around for our interview with SS Wilson. Just wanted to give you a heads up that there were a couple little uh, technical issues with the audio throughout, but it clears up pretty quickly each time it comes up. So we hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks. We're here right now with uh, S.S. Wilson, co-creator of the Tremors franchise. Uh, we are so excited to have him here today. Uh, Steve, thank you for being with us here at Sequel Rights. Happy to be here. <laughs> um, this is uh, just really exciting for us. Um, so I wanted to just kind of uh, start things off by asking a little bit about like where the idea uh, for the film originated. Okay, um, let's see. So my partner, Britt Maddock, and I had sold a couple, three fairly high-profile screenplays, mm -hmm. finally, after 10 years of knocking around Hollywood, not doing anything. And uh, uh, um, we came out of, out of uh, producing and directing and writing short films for schools and libraries, back when there was such a thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so we were used to doing everything. We, we had met at USC, the film, the graduate program at USC Film School, and we were used to doing everything, shooting, writing, writing, shooting, <laughs> cutting, doing sound, putting the movie out. So when we sold Short Circuit and, and subsequent projects that we worked on, we were we were sort of stunned at, at the fact that writers were not only part, not part of the production process, but not welcome <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the time. And, and, uh, so we, we missed, you know, we missed having total control over our stuff. And our agent said, well, you guys, you're talking about producing. You're not talking about writing in Hollywood. And you're going to have to come up with something that you completely control and we'll try to sell it that way. So go into your file box and, and, uh, you know, come up with something that we can generate on spec. Cause, right, you know, we were kind of going from project to project, just being hired by people to do whatever they want to have done. Uh, so we said, okay. And she was the one actually who picked what we called land sharks at the time. <laughs> and, uh, the idea was, it was, it was loosely based, well, it was based on a note that I had made. I had a brief job working for the Navy, making movies out in the desert where the Navy had a base, oddly enough. Oh, wow. And, uh, and uh, the, it's out in the Mojave Desert, actually not too far from where we actually ended up shooting tremors, oddly enough. <laughs> and there's these bizarre rock formations out there. And on the weekends when I was working, I would hike around uh, the, the area. And uh, somewhere along the line, I made a note, what if there was something that could move through the sand, you know, like a shark or a fish or something? And I was trapped on this rock. That's all it said. And, uh, but she said, well, that sounds interesting. That sounds different. So then Brent and Vaughn Underwood and, and I sat down and worked out an outline. And it's funny now, you know, now that it's a franchise, <laughs> when, because everybody thinks they know what Tremors is. And I think studio executives probably think they wouldn't, they would have bought it, but they didn't. Right. And we, we pitched it first as a pitch because we were, you know, we could get a meeting with anybody. We were fairly high profile, high profile guys at the time. And uh, didn't couldn't sell it, and then we wrote an outline, twenty five page treatment, very very detailed. Couldn't sell it, so she, my our agent said, "Well, you're gonna have to write it. Uh, just write the script on spec, and we'll try to sell it." And we did that, and she uh, uh, then very carefully handpicked the executives that it would go to, knowing the town really well as she did. The whole business has completely change the way stuff is sold and the reason stuff is sold is all different now but mm -hmm. uh, but at the time she she kind of knew that it would get passed on all over town and it did but she also knew that jim jacks at universal was an executive who really knew movie history he would really get the sort of 50 sci-fi vibe and understand it and he did and he went to the studio heads and fought for it and continued to fight for us all the way through production. Uh, uh, so because of Jim and Nancy's hand-picking these people, and then at the 11th hour, Nancy involved Gail Ann Hurd, um, uh, partly to support getting Ron on the movie, because Ron Underwood, we were, we were determined that our friend Ron would direct. Mm -hmm. uh, he was the one who originally hired us back in the day in the educational world, and, and so... 
uh, giving you probably more detail than you really want to. But anyway, <laughs> those were all the steps. Those were all the steps that were required. And then it finally sold and finally got a green light for a low budget movie. And, uh, and then the last piece that was needed was that Ron had to convince Kevin Bacon. If we got Kevin Bacon, we had no <laughs> movie. And if we did get Kevin Bacon, we did have a movie. And thankfully, Ron went to lunch with Kevin and Kevin said yes. Yes. And we are thankful for all of that as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so after after all that hard work uh, uh, bringing that first movie together, were were you guys surprised at the reaction to it um, once it was released and like the reaction to it on home video and everything after the fact? <laughs> well, it was a very slow motion surprise. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> the movie. The movie, you know, it, it did okay, but mm-hmm. it was not the hit the studio was expecting. And it's the only time in my entire career that a studio executive called me and the head of Universal called me personally and said, we blew it. We blew the campaign. <laughs> I'm so upset. But the reality was nobody still knew what Tremors was. You know, we didn't know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that we had done this sort of genre twisting thing. We just did what we liked to do. And we had certain rules going in that made it what it was. And uh, uh, there were certain 50s tropes that we refused to do, for example. We said, yeah, there will not be, you know, the, the, the star will not be the head of the National Guard or the local sheriff or any of those things. It will be these two <laughs> handymen who don't even want the job. And, and those were all strange ideas, and they were comedic ideas. And so the studio marketing department didn't know how to sell the movie. And it's not like we knew. It's not like we were telling them, oh, you're making a mistake. Other than with the poster, which we thought was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> uh, but even there, they actually did what we asked. We we begged them, don't show the, the, the graboids in the trailers. Don't show you know that it the movie is structured so that the graboids are a surprise. You've got to understand this. The audience will be surprised the first time they see it. And, oh, okay, well we'll just show the tentacle and put teeth in it. Oh my god, so, <laughs> uh, the monster guys, the, 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 the Tom Woodruff and Alec give us equally horrified at the poster because yeah. it was so Jaws too. The poster was Jaws. Yep. Don't, really? yep. Jaws in the dirt, really? <laughs> so anyway, uh, 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 so the movie was you know it was not a huge hit. And Kevin was disappointed. Yeah, that's why he didn't want to come back to to Primus too, or one reason he didn't want to come back to Primus too, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so, so we forgot about it. You know, we moved on. We, we had great fun making it. It was everything we wanted it to be. You know, we had total control as writers. We bugged Ron all the way through the movie. <laughs> you know, we were on set every day, bothering Ron and bothering the cast and nitpicking about everything. I ended up shooting second unit because I had done a lot of that kind of thing on the educational movies. And Ron said, well, you should just shoot second unit. And so we had great fun, but you know, made its money back and that's about it. Yeah. So it was years later, it was with the, the advent, uh, as you know, obviously, but with the, the, the video, home video market began to grow and grow as a, as a thing. Mm-hmm. And so one day we get this call from the home video division of Universal, which we did not know existed. And they said, Hey, we would really like a Tremors too for the home video division. And we said, Oh, okay. <laughs> and they, this was going, you know, this was a, a new thing, and it was going like gangbusters, and they said something that uh, ultimately, all these years later, has proved to be true. They said, you know, we can sell anything called Tremors. We could call sell an empty VHX box called Tremors. <laughs> I think that's a compliment, but I'm not sure. And <laughs> they, <laughs> so, you know, so so suddenly, here we were thinking about a sequel, and, and, and we... It was it was all very surprising. We said, "Yeah, absolutely, we'll do it." And uh, uh, and so the only rule we had for Tremors Two was no Queen Graboid. You know, there will be no <laughs> yes. Queen Graboid. That's the only thing we know. And uh, we, uh, you know, and beyond that, you know, what was funny about the division because they just wanted a box called Tremors Two. <laughs> We had total control again. We said, there'll be no Queen Grabway. We don't care. Said, well, Steve, Steve will direct it. We don't care. <laughs> yeah, what, what was it like to uh, step into the director's chair for uh, the, the second film? <laughs> well, d- directing is a blast. It is something I never thought I wanted to do. I'm a reclusive person. I was an animator for years in the educational market, working in my garage doing stop motion animation. And I was a writer, you know, another solitary profession. 
And uh, 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 when, when when Ron asked me to shoot second unit on Tremors one, I was I was horrified because I ended up with this crew of like a hundred people, and I was like, oh my god, I can't do this. But then I realized I could do it, and I got the bug, and I got to, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like being the king, you know. <laughs> if, if if you know what you're doing, and if you treat people well, you know, if you are open to ideas, you know, you can be a jerk and be a director, and a lot of people are, but you don't get the best work out of people if you do that, and so you end up getting credit for all these incredibly talented people. <laughs> <laughs> If you just stand back and say, hey, you know, I want the explosion over here and not over there, or I want the explosion bigger, you know, that's my job on Tremors too. Bigger explosion. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, that's why the shrieker blows up the way it does when Bert shoots it. With, oh, with yeah, that, that is a great shot. It's like a Well, fun. it's interesting. You know, we tested that over and over. The, the effects guys would come to me between takes. We're shooting somewhere else, and they say, okay, we have, the, we have a test shrieker rigged to blow with a squib. And I go over and pop and I go guys it's a 50 caliber no 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 <laughs> and come back the next day you know, here it is bang you know, guys it's a 50 caliber <laughs> so I actually didn't know when we actually shot it I actually didn't know what it was going to do <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so it was funny even to me <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> uh I was just curious in the writing process for Tremors 2, you guys are scaling up like that totally makes sense with you guys having total control and just the genesis of the uh, the project in general is just you guys wanting to have the creative freedom. And I think that comes across in, in all of these movies and why they're so endearing. And I was just curious, you know, for two, you had some uh, uh, CG shots, one or two in, in Tremors 1, and there's a lot more in two. And I'm just curious with your background as an animator and in the writer's room, when you have a scene of, you know, X many shriekers come over the hill, were you, is it your background in animation that made you confident that you could do that? Because it's a really swings for the fences for the sequel, and I think it succeeds. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it was certainly sort of the, the, it was just becoming a thing, and it was just becoming doable, um, given that people, um, were willing to to cut their rates for us on our low budget movie. Um, we, well, certainly when you say there's CG in Tremors one, there are map paintings and there are miniatures. There isn't actually any computer imagery. Hmm. Uh, uh, it's that old. But uh, <laughs> uh, we we had we had hopes. But again, you know, we would go to our people and say, "Look, what can we do? Here's how much money we have." Uh, and what can we do? And um, the um, oh gosh, I'm blanking on the animator. <laughs> the brilliant animator who did our shriekers, he had done a test for us, which helped us actually mm -hmm. realize that we could do it. Um, and uh, uh, um, so we, it isn't so much we wrote it because we knew we could do it. It was we <laughs> would suggest things. And say how many how many shriekers can we have? You know, <laughs> and they would say, look at the budget, and you know, and everybody would ham and haul. Well, maybe we can do seven. You know, okay, well, we'll do seven. And then you design your shot. You back into it, and you design your shot. So the sequence where we were pretty sure we wanted it was when they stack up. We we couldn't see a way with the with the puppets, which are big and heavy and bulky, and lots of cables running out of their feet and everything. Uh, even when you, we couldn't see a way to do that idea, we loved that idea. So that's how we sort of backed into. Let's do that with CG, and it, you know, and it was a, it was an uphill battle. You know, the, all the technology was was old and funky, and it was hard to get the stuff to match. It still doesn't really match, and if you're honest and you look at it, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, it works emotionally, but it's uh, it's not a Jurassic Park. Um, you, you spoke you spoke a little bit about like the rules that you guys had for the films and like you didn't want to have a queen graboid like what what was the uh, process and kind of like the rules around how you evolved the uh, mythology for each subsequent sequel and like the evolutions with the graboids themselves um, like yeah what was kind of the process behind behind coming up with those ideas. Well, it was a it was a, a give and take, and it was always a surprise. You know, the, the studio was forever saying, "There's only going to be one more movie." <laughs> you know, we we know we can sell Tremors too, so that's what we're making. And it was okay. So we said, "Okay, we came up with the triggers. You know, that's good. That's different." 
And they immediately, not immediately, but fairly soon, said, we need Tremors 3. I went, really? Well, <laughs> okay. Because, again, we, 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 we weren't really ever thinking franchise. You didn't think franchise back in those days. I mean, right. The quick, quick sidebar, you know, when Short Circuit 2 came up, our agent lobbied us heavily not to do it. The sequels were for hacks. Nobody did sequels. The originators <laughs> never did sequels. Imagine, imagine saying that today. And uh, 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 so we were, to some extent, each time they came to us, we were we kind of frantically started making it up as we as we went. <laughs> not that we not that we do that when we write. We we we're outline we outline like crazy when we write, and we always have to know exactly where we're going. We sometimes outline longer than we write, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 but so, so the came with Tremors three, and it was wow. We want to be consistent. Oh, let me back up too. Something that was always important to us, and I think it's fairly evident in the in the, in the four movies anyway. Um, uh, uh, very important to us to be true to the fans of these kinds of movies. We, you know, now they rule the marketplace, but when we were doing these movies. <laughs> You know, uh, it was still the niche market of kind of comic book nerdy people, and and I, and I, I am deeply one of those, and and I knew what we like. I knew that we like <laughs> consistent, we like consistent rules, and we love you know homage and little ideas that that are consistent throughout the project. And then Brent and I, as writers, are we're very. We had figured out what our tone was by then. We figured out we knew what Tremors was then. We knew we had this blend of comedy and horror. And, and it's not an easy blend to do, to get right. And uh, a lot of times we would write stuff into the scripts that were too funny. Even Tremors 1. There was a, there was a previous draft of Tremors 1 that was too funny. Had, had jokes that were at the expense of the monsters or jokes that were... It's not a line that somebody would really say in a situation. You know, we tried to always have people say what they would really say but it's also funny so anyway uh so then we backed into well gee we need another thing to happen now it's not going to be a queen shrieker so <laughs> yeah. what is it going to be uh and 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 in this case you know again we had these people coming back to the movies you know the guys at adi and the, and the scotex um um often came back you know because people enjoyed doing the movies they were these little you know just a small group of people shooting for 20 days or whatever we had. And uh, 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 um, it was Tom and Alec at ADI who had the idea for the ass blasters because we said, what do we do? What are the shooters <laughs> changing? What are they shaking? And they base everything they do on, on reality. Their, their, their creatures are fantastical but have a, a reality base because they know so much about bio biology and zoology and they have, they're, you know, the whole studio is full of books of just weird details about animals and they said have you ever heard of the bombardier beetle and we we're like no <laughs> and it's, oh yeah it's this beetle this is the way it gets away from prey it mixes chemicals in its butt and explodes its butt and you go no and it <laughs> does absolutely you can go watch videos of it online and uh we're like, oh my god well this is that's it that's the ass plaster that's our monster so uh and then we decided it would fly we thought that would be cool and then we decided to up the ante by saying, having it uh, uh, um, uh, uh, see differently from the way the grab boys and the shriekers did. Right. So. Yeah, and you know it's it's amazing because it ends up making this kind of like you know loop within the species, like a circle of life type of situation, and it's all very yeah. it's all very connected. I, I I love that. I love that. Oh, good. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> that was always what we were trying to do, and of course. And the studio swore up and down that Tremors 3 was the last movie. <laughs> yeah. So that's why we closed the loop. We said, oh, perfect. We get to close the loop. We'll, we'll tell a complete story. And then they immediately wanted Tremors 4. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, so I was wondering, uh, the female characters in the first four Tremors films are some of the most practically dressed, intelligent, capable women ever in film, <laughs> especially at that time. Uh, so I was wondering what kind of efforts or discussions took place around that subject, and uh, why do you think that you and your team were so great at creating these really strong female co-leads? 
I am so glad to hear that because I do feel like we were ahead of the curve, and I, it, it wasn't like we set out to do that. In in a way, it, it's something that we felt was important from the get go. Uh, we always knew. I, I guess I would say that in some instances, it, all of our discussion about character and tremors one was was we will not do any fifties tropes other than that the girl is a scientist. And uh, uh, so everything about Rhonda was going to not be, you know, the helpless person being helped by the sheriff who doesn't know anything and shouldn't know anything. And uh, so that mindset was there going in. And then I guess both of us are just, we just, like capable women anyway so uh that was something that then just continued not through all the movies but i am glad to hear that because it is something that we don't often hear <laughs> the, the one thing i get from geeky fanboys is ronda's not very sexy uh, what <laughs> oh, come on. and i was i always go have you looked at finn carter but, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that is great. Okay. <laughs> I, I I have actually heard, you know, I answer questions still on the Stampede website, and uh, I don't put them all up there because some of them are not appropriate, but they, uh, <laughs> but I do get the wackiest questions. Okay. Uh, so on the subject of inclusion, then, I think also the first four movies really showcase a diverse cast of characters regarding both eth- ethnicity and age groups and do a good job of not making them you know, offensive or overly stereotypical. Um, was this something that was uh, important to you? And did you ever get any uh, pushback from the studio to kind of change the demographics of the town of perfection? Uh, interesting, interesting question. No, we didn't. The studio was very supportive. And it was it, the, the town of perfection, the original town of perfection grew out of what was going on at the time we wanted a diverse cast not again not because we were really making a statement it was it was we lived in the southwest and we were aware of what was going on and the the uh, the walter chang character for example was originally um vietnamese because a lot of vietnamese were resettling in america at the time and it was actually it was not common but it wasn't uncommon to go into a little store and have it owned by a vietnamese guy and then we cast walter because that's you know the, the Asian of the Asian cast members that came in, Walter was the one that most embodied what we wanted. And, you know, and Walter quietly took us aside one day and said, "You know, I am Chinese," and we we're like, "Oh yeah, we should probably change that." Shouldn't we? <laughs> and uh, um, and I was glad that he brought it up. We you know I I can say that we we were we were naive enough at the time not to have thought of that ourselves. So yeah, so in that one conversation, and the whole history of Chang's Market changed, uh, and we changed the name uh, to a Chinese name, and, and never looked back. Um, so it, it became a thing because of where we started, <laughs> if that makes sense. In other words, because we decided to have an Asian character running the store, because we felt like that was a, a thing that was really going on in the Southwest. Then, subsequently, it be, we we uh, uh, we felt like we should just keep we should keep doing that. You know, it does represent the population. You know, and that's why the Hispanic characters are there, and, uh, and even in the series, you know, we, we continue to do that. So it was by design after we figured it out. <laughs> that's gr- that's a great story. I totally love that. Um, so when, once we get to Tremors 4, uh, why was it decided to do kind of a Wild West era prequel? Were there other eras or other scenarios discussed for that film? Um, well, we were we were completely taken aback because they had swore up and down the marketing department. You know, the handwriting was on the wall. The marketing was going to become the rule of Hollywood as it does now. But we didn't. We weren't, we weren't reading it that way. But they said, you know, Tremors 3 is the last movie. Okay, good. We know exactly what to do. And no, no, we got to have terms for it right now. And like, oh my God. <laughs> guys, you know, we really did close the loop. You know, we were, we're not going to break the rules and have the ass blasters turn into something else. And said, we don't care. <laughs> so I, I said, I really don't know what to do other than to, to really do a prequel or something completely different. And 
<laughs> the video division, and was the best thing about them, we don't care. <laughs> so I said, you, you, you can't, would, you, would you consider a Western? You know, do we retell the story, the, sort of the original term of story as a Western? Sure. So that's what we decided to do. And we knew we were gambling with the fans because here, first of all, Bert had become, you know, Michael Gross's character had become the sort of the centerpiece of the the thing by Termas three and um, uh, but we there again we, we thought well there probably won't be very many more of these let's have fun let's do it Michael was completely on board playing the opposite of Bert as Hiram <laughs> yeah and, uh, 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 and then we we brought in other characters sort of fill that role you know David Diego and so forth and so the, the studio was supportive in the sense of doing it. Uh, and it was the, it was kind of the only thing we could think of, you know. We, we didn't want to break the rules, so we said, "All right, how do we? We'll take our existing monsters." Oh, and then we, and then we thought, well, the one thing we've never seen is baby graboids. Let's go. <laughs> let's we'll go to the other end of the loop, the life cycle, and start with baby graboids. And, um, that's how we backed into it. And, and no, um, to answer your question, once we, once they said it was okay to do a western and a kind of a prequel. No, we didn't think about, oh, let's do Grab Boys in Australia or something. We did think about that later. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, lo- I love that even, you know, all the way into the fourth film, you guys are finding, like, new and inventive ways to show the Graboids, like, that, that shot of the, uh, the Graboid chasing them as they're leaving on the, like, stagecoach, and it goes underneath the bridge. I thought that was really cool. <laughs> it's, it's a fantastic shot. It was exactly what I wanted. And was, the, the, that's a miniature. And the Scotex did that. Oh, you man. would not believe, you would not believe the rig they made with a little six foot long graboid that had, it was a track with little, but it was a custom made curved track with a hump so that the tail would kick up and hit the bottom of the bridge at exactly the right moment. Cause they were matching an existing live action shot. Right. That I worked and worked and worked on with the guys to, to get the dust to kick up off the bridge as though it had been impacted by something heavy. Because, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, the VFX guys, they try all kinds of things. And I, it's just, communication is very difficult. It's interesting. It's very hard to, the your biggest challenge sometimes as a director is communicating what you want or what you see in your head. Because yeah. uh, you know, it's hard to get it across. And, but anyway, yeah, the, yeah. Thank you. I love that shot. Yeah, it's, it's exactly awesome. what we wanted. <laughs> um, so I have kind of a fascination with uh, the experience of working with child actors. So I was wondering. I had a couple questions regarding the ones that you worked with in the Tremors films. Uh, what was it like working with Ariana Richards both before and after her massive uh, kind of Jurassic Park fame? <laughs> well, we didn't know what she was going to do, so she was. <laughs> It was perfectly fine. She was, she's a, she was a lovely little girl and a lovely young woman. It was really, really fun when she agreed to come back because she was kind of moving away from acting at that point. You know, she's a very talented artist, and uh, um, you know, a kid on a set, you don't see that much. There's lots of rules about how long they can be on set and they have to be in school and all these things. So when you work with them, it's a short, intensive period. You know, when she's available mm-hmm. to do pogo sticking, then everything <laughs> is focused. Everything is focused on that. And uh, um, but she was, you know, even even at a young age, she had been in something you probably know better than I. She had been in something just before that. And, uh, but she was, you know, very professional and hardworking, as everybody was. You know, we were incredibly lucky with some of those Everything came together in a way on the on the movie, as low budget as it was, and as hard as the shoot was, just just physically, just weather wise, you know, it was just murder shooting out in in Lone Pine. Uh, you know, she was like everybody, just there and hardworking and doing things over and over and getting dirty and getting dust blown in her face. Every actor got dust. Not only is it windy and dusty, but the effects guys are blowing dust in your face with big air guns. So. Okay. 
Okay. Um, and I think something that we're all kind of jokingly wondering, uh, is that kid Bobby Jaco- Jacoby as annoying as Melvin, the character, is in real life? Or is he cool? He's, he's very cool. He's especially very cool now, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, Robert. And he, uh, uh, he, he makes fun of himself in, in Tremors because uh, he feels like he, he he was actually young. I mean, he was he got a, I think he got if I'm remembering correctly, he got the legal powers to grant him adult status so that he could work longer days, oh, wow. even though technically he wasn't 18 when he shot, which was a huge help to us because you know the character when he's on, you know, he was on all day every day. I mean, these were long, long days, and uh, 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 <laughs> he absolutely hates today the line "Way to go, dude." <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> he, he insists that he was just not on that way and not feeling. You should ask him, really, of course, because he <laughs> tells the story better, better than I do. But, uh, uh, and I remember at the time thinking, "Boy, what an unusual reading of that line." <laughs> <laughs> And and uh, and it became a thing, you know. It's like people cut it into songs and whatnot. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's funny. Um, and then just about the last child actor here with uh, Sam Lee in Tremors Four. Why was it decided to so heavily feature um, a really young Asian actor in this film? And um, was there a consideration about going with an older kid instead, or making him the son of one of the other characters in the town? The, um, you know, now, Tremors 4, even though we did the outline, was written by a talented writer from Six Feet Under. And all the names are going out of my head today. And hopefully you can put these on a blog or something. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, uh, and it's, my memory is that he pushed for the character that Sam plays. Mm. Uh, it became more of a central character than I had envisioned doing the outline. Okay. That's, that's the way I remember it. And then, you know, and I went with it, you know, thinking it was good, you know, and then again, God, I feel like we were just blessed on the first four movies. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. It's just amazingly hardworking, you know, and not terribly experienced, you know, just, he just had that thing. <laughs> ability to be real on camera. Okay. Um, so we also noticed kind of hidden in the credits that uh, Matthew Scott Wilson appears in small roles in three and four. And we're just wondering if he was related to you. And uh, if so, what's he up to nowadays? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's my son. He <laughs> was very much and it is still very much would love to, to, to act for a living. He hasn't quite gotten there, but. Yes, given my limited powers, I was able to get him the small parts in those two movies. And uh, mostly he's done theater. He's in Chicago now, uh, uh, doing theater wherever and whenever he can. Okay, great. But yeah, that's my son. Uh, so, yeah, the so you guys did the first four movies, and, you know, it, it kicked off... Uh, and is still kicking off this huge, you know, franchise for Tremors. Um, and I know you said you uh, are always on the Stampede Entertainment website answering fan questions. What what, what what's been your experience with the Tremors fan base overall uh, throughout well, this entire great. thing? It's it's great fun. I mean, you know, it's amazing to us. You know, uh, all these years later to have people still sending in questions and still being interested and still coming up with new questions. And I'm literally staggered. I have a new batch in my email right now that I've got to get to. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> I always think at some point that they'll start repeating themselves, but they don't. They seem, for the most part, they seem to read the whole fact area uh, before they ask. Because it's rare that I get the same question, you know, the, probably the one you get the most is where is the old Jeep? <laughs> <laughs> People really, really want to know where the old Jeep is. Oh, man. <laughs> and of course, sadly, I don't know. You know, we rented two of them. And one thing I tell people, I think I just put it up recently, is that 
you know, cause a lot of people still don't know how you make a movie. They don't know that you need multiple Jeeps to make things work. And, uh, and uh, they're not the same. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fun to look at the original Tremors and spot the differences between the two. Yeah. We try to make them the same. We thought they were the same. <laughs> And you're sitting there editing, and you're backing, going back and forth in a scene, and you go, oh, wow. Yeah. That seems totally different, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you guys must have pulled it off if everyone keeps asking. <laughs> Where's the one Jeep? <laughs> well, it, you know, that was one of those things. We just wanted a big, gnarly, four-wheel drive vehicle. You know, and because we had all these talented people all, you know, doing their best for us, uh, the transportation department found the thing, you know, uh, I know a fair amount about four-wheel drive vehicles, but you know I wouldn't have said, "Oh, go get a Jeep Gladiator," because they're rare to begin with. And uh, you know, this thing showed up on the set, and I'm like, "Oh my God, yeah, that's Valdez's vehicle, absolutely." <laughs> you know, and I think it was—I assume it was just rent. As it, the reason I say I don't know, because I don't know that you just—you know—you you build the town, you get the vehicles, and then you sell it or you rented it and you give it back to the rental place. And, we don't know where they went. It was, it was, they had a devil of time finding one, or a couple of them, for uh, from us three. Then. <laughs> we have to have Jeep Gladiators now. Well, they're really hard to find. Well, no, you have to get one. <laughs> what? Uh, so what? Um, what? What might be one of your favorite onset stories from uh, from working on the first four films? If you if you have one favorite. <laughs> Well, I'm trying, I, yeah, that, that's an interesting question. There's, there's lots of... Uh, well, here, here's one. <laughs> in Tremors 1, uh, there, was, there was a moment in the, in the basement with Bert and Heather when they have killed the Graboid, and he says his famous line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and sometimes you know that a line is going to be big. A lot of times you don't. But this one we knew was an important one. You broke into the wrong damn rec room. <laughs> and uh, uh, so there was, a, there was tension <laughs> when we got to that. Uh, because we, Michael was worried about doing it. Ron was worried about directing it. Brent and I are lurking in the background, worried. <laughs> and we're all waiting for Michael to do it. So, and, it, and it's emotional the sh the shot starts after all the chaos, but but Michael still has to be exhausted, and Reba's exhausted, and they back into the corner. And Ron did this like three or four or five times, and each time Brent and I would run over in the shadows and give him all these notes and ideas. <laughs> and finally, Michael came walking over and said, "Can we all discuss this together?" <laughs> <laughs> He wasn't truly mad, but it was bothering him. You know, there's so a whispering was going on, and then Ron would come out and and suggest another way to do the line. Uh, That's fantastic. That was that was a moment. Nice. I, I know there was. Uh, well, actually, they're in one of the, the funny moments in Tremors Four is in the is in the outtakes, I think, uh, where the horses all go wandering off. <laughs> yeah. Nobody can control their horses. Oh, man. Work, work, working with animals is, is it's, it's amazing. It's you know, I, I felt like such a complete novice. You know, here I love westerns, but I, I don't know anything about horses. And, uh, <laughs> uh, it was just you know, it, it made me appreciate all the westerns I saw as a kid, thinking how much they worked with horses and how much they got the horses to do. Not that our horses were bad; they were just horses. Yeah. But, Okay, um, so I know that you have been asked about the rest of the franchise a lot. I actually did read all of your answers on the Stampede website. Uh, <laughs> but in light of uh, the recent news about the Kevin Bacon pilot and the Tremors 5 and 6 coming out, can you tell us a little bit about how you feel now um, about the Tremors franchise continuing on without you and your team? Well, we're disappointed. You know? We're disappointed because we weren't given a choice. Uh, Universal said we're making Tremors 5 we're starting with your script and we'd like you to rewrite it but other than that we do not want you involved in any way shape or form and they did not say why <laughs> so we don't know why that was and when Kevin announced after, after saying that Tremors was the low point of his career for 20 years 
uh, when Kevin announced he was doing the series, our managers approached the company that was that was going to shoot it and said, hey, you know, the creators are all alive. Would you like to meet with them? And they said, no, absolutely not. So, and did not say why. So, so yeah, I'm disappointed. And I feel like we had a lot of good ideas for what Val would have been doing all these years. Some of them were in Tremors too, but we had to cut them all out. <laughs> okay, and are you and your partners still on okay terms with uh, Michael Gross? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we don't we don't begrudge him running with the character. It's his character, <laughs> no. and uh, the same for John Welpley, who wrote Tremors five and, and six. John wrote Tremors three, uh, based on our outline. And any he, <laughs> he doesn't really lay claim to Tremors five, only because his version is that, that it was changed drastically once it got to South Africa. So. Um, uh, uh, but a job's a job. Somebody's got to write it. You know? yeah. so if somebody came to me and said, hey, you know, write Tremor 6, well, of course you're going to do it. <laughs> uh, well, are, are there any projects that you're currently working on? Or the Stampede Entertainment um, creative team have any plans to get back together or anything? Well, um, we, keep, we keep hoping so. We keep talking about it. it Hollywood has changed so dramatically now with marketing completely running the show. All decisions are based on marketing long before a script is ever written. Uh, selling an original idea is, is quite difficult now. And uh, I don't know that we could sell Tremors now. There, there are no people like Jim Jacks at Universal who saw the script, knew what it was, went in and convinced the studio to make it. So this is going to be a cool movie. That doesn't happen now. Marketing is in control and they want to know how many people know this title and uh, and that all the decisions are made based on how many people already know the title, which is why we are in the sequel universe that we're in. <laughs> uh, and Brent and I have written a TV pilot, uh, several spec scripts, doing what we did back on the Tremors Day and have not been able to sell them. And, we get different responses, <laughs> you know. Uh, oh well, this is just kind of rehashed tremors, or this is that and the other thing. But the reality is, you know, they've never heard of them. So unless you're, you know, unless you're Christopher Nolan, then you can tell the studio, "I'm going to do an original idea," and they can't tell you no. You know, we're not in that. We're not in that ballpark. So, yeah, we keep trying. Um, we keep trying to think of different ways, low budget ideas. We wrote a sci-fi script with no special effects at all. Oh, thinking nice. <laughs> maybe somebody would you know, sort of a it's sort of a bizarre Twilight Zone kind of thing. It's all dialogue with weird ideas, and uh, we kind of thought we might get somewhere with that. And we we've, we've gotten close with that. People get it. Oh yes, I could do this for under a million, you know, kind of thing. But but anyway, uh, no, Ron is off directing TV and has been for years. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Brent and I, like I say, continue to do specs. Uh, our, our manager, agent, partner, Nancy, retired. So uh, that's that's where we are. Well, then I do my books. You know, I've been writing novels. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I've actually turned one of our pitches that we could not sell to anybody because it was an original idea. I mean, we, we were actually told at 20th, gee, this is a great idea. I wish it was based on something. And uh, But we can't buy it because it isn't based on anything. It's too original. And, uh, 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 so I turned that. It's called Freddy Cats. I turned that into a book. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing I'm doing another Freddy Cats book now, and I did I did a, a book that I started in my teens. I finished that and put it out. It's called Tucker's Monster. So that, that's my universe right now. Is I've been writing novels, awesome. You know, with the with the backhanded hope that <laughs> if one of the novels sells well enough, then a studio will suddenly say, "Say, we could do a movie based on this." So, <laughs> Well, we'll see. Even even with the novels, it kind of just gets back to the heart of why you guys did Tremors, of just having the creative control and, and doing the things that, that excited you. And I think that that's the thing that resonates so much. And it's, it is frustrating with Hollywood. It's like, hey, like I just did you know what I knew nerds like me wanted to see, and it spawned an entire franchise. And doing <laughs> those rules and doing that, um, you know, it really resonates. And so I think that... that it's really inspiring as I'm sure filmmakers listening out there and, and to me personally that this thing that we all love just came from, Hey, let's just do the thing the way we want to do it. And, and I think that 
everyone on set, everybody who's doing those performances, it really comes through. And I think that ultimately that's the thing that brings everybody to Tremors and keeps them coming back. Well, thank you. I believe that too. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I, you know, it's been such a pleasure getting to talk to you today. Uh, we really appreciate you being here uh, with us, Steve. And, it, it, and you know, like Tyler just said, it's inspiring uh, to see that you're st- still so involved with the fan base online. And it, I just I just think that's really awesome. And um, it's been such a pleasure talking with you. Thank you. You too. It's, it's, it's nice to be in the position of still having people aware of what we did. So I appreciate, I appreciate the, the, the research and the, and the thought that you folks put into this analysis. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, well, is there any uh, specific place you want to direct people to uh, be able to follow you online? Um, if they want to reach out, uh, we can, we'll obviously be posting the Stampede Entertainment website and everything, but is there anywhere else that would be a good spot to check you out? Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to, <laughs> my publishers want me to reactivate my Facebook, which I let die a while back. <laughs> uh, 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 so yeah, I, I may do that. I'm supposed to do that. Um, what else? Um, a real deal productions.com is where the books are available. They're available on Amazon, of course, mm-hmm. too, but a real deal productions back in the Midwest handles the sales of them. Um, but uh, no, I guess I, I guess I would, that's that's pretty much it. I, and, you know, the, the the fact page at, at Stampede is the place to send questions when you have questions about Tremor. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you again so much. This has been so we, we've been like excited about this all week and last week. Like <laughs> it's yeah, just been it was such, really great talk speaking. such an honor to get thank to talk you. to you. Thank you so so I'm much a- for your time. My pleasure. Thank you all. All right. Have a good day, Steve. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye.